Hello, and welcome to this short video about how impervious or hard surfaces impact fish, wildlife, and waterfront property values. My name is Lynn Markham, and in this video, I'll describe what we've learned from scientists researching the effects of impervious surfaces over the past 20 years. In Wisconsin, we're fortunate to have over 15,000 lakes and over 80,000 miles of rivers and streams. Healthy lakes and rivers are the basis for creating fond memories of time spent near the water. Healthy fish, abundant wildlife, and clear water all depend on how waterfront properties are developed. In this video, we will discuss how impervious surfaces impact fishing, wildlife such as loons, and waterfront property values. Impervious surfaces are hard, man-made surfaces such as rooftops, driveways, roads, parking areas, and patios. With hard surfaces, rain and melting snow can no longer soak into the ground. This increases the amount of water that runs off the land, carrying pollutants to lakes and streams. Impervious surfaces also decrease the amount of rain and snow that becomes groundwater by soaking into the ground. This reduces the cool water entering lakes and streams during dry periods. In this slide, you see the results of a study of fish in 47 warm water streams in Wisconsin. When the watershed, the area that drains to the stream, was less than 8% impervious, the researchers found a large number of fish and fish species. When impervious surfaces were over 12%, the number of fish species plummeted, and northern pike and largemouth bass were eliminated. More impervious surfaces resulted in less fish. But why? Well, let's take a look at some of the fish listed here. The horny head chub, known as the red tail chub in bait shops, was eliminated when watersheds had over 8% impervious surface. The horny head chub creates its nest by finding or creating a low spot on the stream bottom and sweeping it clean using its tail. The male makes a nest by carrying pebbles in its mouth, one or two at a time. After he brings in each layer of pebbles, the fish spawn. The male brings more and more pebbles until the nest is one to two feet across and up to six inches high. This nest protects the eggs and newly hatched larvae from predators and provides constant, mild current that is free from silt so the developing eggs receive enough oxygen. If more sediment is washed into the stream, which can happen as a result of more impervious surfaces, the eggs in this nest won't hatch because they were covered in silt, and horny head chubs will disappear from the stream. Other fish that use the horny head chub nests for spawning in Wisconsin streams include the southern red-bellied dace and the common shiner. So if the horny head chub is eliminated, these fish may also disappear. Let's also talk a bit about the northern pike that disappears from streams with over 12% impervious surface in their watersheds. Northern pike feed by sight, so when runoff from impervious surfaces washes sediment into a lake or stream making the water cloudy, then pike have a harder time finding their food. Northern pike are very tolerant of cold water and even low oxygen, but not heat. In the summer of 2012, hundreds of northern pike died in central and southern Wisconsin due to water temperatures at the surfaces of some lakes that reached as high as 90 degrees. So now that we know that 10 to 12 percent impervious surface has large effects on fish, what does this look like on the land? Well, it's nothing like downtown Milwaukee or Chicago. It's still pretty rural, as shown on this aerial photo. On a half-acre lot, 12% impervious surface equals 2,600 square feet. Now, let's talk about why more impervious surface results in fewer fish. Impervious surfaces cause rain and snow to run off rather than soak into the ground and become our groundwater. 
Greater runoff from impervious surfaces lead to larger and more frequent floods during wet periods. The flip side is because the water runs off during storms, it doesn't soak into the ground. This leads to lower stream flows and warmer water temperatures during dry periods, which is hard on fish. Let's talk about a couple other reasons that more impervious surface results in less fish. As you know, a paved parking lot can get pretty hot on a summer day. When water runs off hot pavement or shingles, it makes the water in lakes and streams hotter for the fish. Runoff from impervious surfaces carries more nutrients from soil and fertilizers into our waters. This results in less oxygen in the water, which fish need to survive. Researchers have found that in watersheds with over 11% impervious surface, trout are gone. Similarly, northern pike are gone if the watershed gets above 12% impervious surface. Now, a few more reasons that impervious surface results in less fish. More sediments and algae growth make it difficult for predator fish that hunt by sight to find their food. In addition, sediments cover spawning beds of fish, such as walleye and smallmouth bass, depriving those eggs of the oxygen they need. Now, let's look at a couple of specific fish that are affected by impervious surfaces. Brook trout and brown trout both require cold, clean, high oxygen water to survive. Part of their diet consists of aquatic insects and small fish. Their populations decrease with increased runoff and increased sediment entering the water. When impervious surfaces covered more than 11% of watersheds in the Minnesota and Wisconsin study, trout were completely eliminated from these streams. Now, let's look at walleye. Walleye prefer to spawn on gravel or cobble-covered bottoms. They typically spawn between mid-April and early May in Wisconsin, when spring runoff is highest. The runoff from impervious surfaces can cause soil erosion. When the spaces between the rocks and gravel on the base of the stream become blanketed with silt from erosion, walleye eggs can die quickly due to lack of oxygen. Impervious surfaces also impact wildlife, such as loons. In the late 1800s, loons were found as far south as northern Illinois and Indiana. Today, loons have been pushed northward, in part due to the effects of shoreland development. Loons nest at, right at the water's edge, where they incubate their eggs for 30 days. They need a safe, secure, undisturbed location to nest along the lake shoreline or on an island. Wisconsin loons are more likely to be found on lakes with clearer water. As shown in the graph, if the water clarity is less than 5 feet, the likelihood of finding loons is around 20%. Compared to if the water clarity is 20 feet or greater, the likelihood of having loons on a lake is over 70%. A question that we've been asking over the years is whether there's a connection between waterfront property values and water quality. In fact, in 1968 already, researchers concluded that more polluted lakes have less valuable property than do cleaner lakes. Similarly, a 2003 study of over 1,200 waterfront properties in Minnesota found that when water clarity changed by three feet, the changes in property prices for these lakes are tens of thousands to millions of dollars. Healthy watersheds make healthy lakes and higher waterfront property values. When impervious surfaces increase, more runoff can carry more pollutants to lakes and streams and erode water quality. If this happens, 
Then, local government tax base around lakes erodes too. What you and your neighbors do to sustain or improve water quality will help maintain the health of the lake and waterfront property values. To bring this all together, impervious surfaces impact fish, wildlife, and water quality and property values. In terms of fish, when water runs over asphalt or shingles and into a lake or stream, it gets warmer, and some fish can't take the heat. Northern pike are completely eliminated in streams that have more than 12% impervious surface in their watershed. Similarly, trout are eliminated from streams where the watershed is more than 11% impervious. Impervious surfaces also impact wildlife such as loons. Loons hunt by sight and depend on clear water to catch the fish that they eat. Similarly, having clear water is linked to higher waterfront property values. If we want good fisheries, we need to work at keeping our lakes and streams healthy, which includes limiting the impervious surfaces around them. To learn more about the topics covered in this video, you can look for the brochure titled Impervious Surfaces, How They Impact Fish, Wildlife, and Waterfront Property Values. It's available on the internet as well as at county zoning offices. There's a longer 20-page version and a short 6-page version. You're also welcome to contact me, Lynn Markham, at the contact information provided on this slide. Thank you for joining us to learn more about impervious surfaces.